Guten Morgen. For today's video, we're going to do a quick introduction to the Pico W and connecting it to Wi-Fi, your internal Wi-Fi network. Now, uh, the Pico's been out, Pico W's been out for, I believe, over a year now, probably a little longer, so most people have already done it and all that, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this. The purpose of this particular video has to do with getting you familiar with it, but then introducing you to a framework uh, that I ran across that I want to utilize in probably a number of upcoming projects. And it was an example program created by the good folks over at Core Electronics. So that is where the source code that I'm using here today came from. I don't really want to, and nor do I probably have the time to go into great detail or to learn all about Wi-Fi communications, even within the MicroPython environment here on the Pico W. Rather, I want to spend more of my time and energy on developing applications utilizing that capability. So I'm not going to go into all the detail of how this whole process works with Wi-Fi communications. Furthermore, it's truly above my, uh, my, my knowledge capacity, we'll call it. Uh, networking has always been a mystery to me. I can do the basics, get my computers and so forth hooked up to the network. Uh, in the internet, uh, like most people, I can manage, somewhat manage my uh, network here. Uh, but nonetheless, it's, it's something I really have no desire to get into in detail, and I just want to utilize those tools uh, with the least amount of time invested in them. So we're going to start out by going to the Raspberry Pi website, and we're going to get our UF2 file, uh, which recently just changed. So let's take a quick look. Here we are on the Raspberry Pi website. I'm going to go to Hardware. We're going to look at, uh, where did they go? Right here. The uh, Raspberry Pi section. And I'm going to avoid all the propaganda down here. Um, although there might be something... Okay, you'll notice here that they're talking about uh, uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That was just announced, I believe, within the last week or so. Uh, we'll be exploring uh, Bluetooth at a much later time, but for right now we're focusing on uh, just the Wi-Fi stuff. But for me, the, the fast start is to go to the Get Started uh, MicroPython, and then, as I recall, it was right here. This is where we want to download our uh, UF2 files. Now we have uh, Raspberry Pi Pico, no Wi-Fi, Raspberry Pi with Wi-Fi, Raspberry Pi Pico with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth LE support. Um, now you might think, well, heck, I'll just download uh, Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, and, and that's perfectly fine, and that would work for what we're doing uh, in most cases. But remember, you're also loading in Bluetooth code. And on microcontrollers, we are limited on memory, uh, so we don't want to be wasting it unnecessarily, which I often do in many of my examples. But let's take a look, or I'm going to take a look at... Downloading the Raspberry Pi uh, Pico W UF2 file, I'll download that, and then I'm going to install that onto the Pico W that I've got set up here on the bench. Like all Picos, when we plug them in the first time, we'll get a pop-up on our screen, on our computer screen, that's telling us uh, pretty much that so far it's not ready to use. And what we all we really need to do is copy one of our Wi-Fi file, or I'm sorry, one of our UF2 files onto this uh, area here, and then let it do its thing. So I'm going to just select. Uh, I've got mine uh, UF2 files stored on my desktop here in a folder, and I've got them sorted out to help me keep track of what's what. Uh, Pi Maroni, I use a lot of their products, uh, as you've seen in videos. Uh, then the UF2 for Wi-Fi, UF2 for Wi-Fi wi Bluetooth, and then regular uh, Picos. So we'll use Wi-Fi, 
And the lowest one here is uh, apparently the newest one, version 1.2. We've got a 1.19, 1-6, 1-7. Of course, they're marked unstable. That always is a real sign of confidence. Everything is, so, is good with it. Um, so I'm going to just take this, drag it over to here, let it do its copy thing, and we'll be ready to roll in the normal uh, uh, Peak, Raspberry Pi Pico environment through Thani in a second. Now we're into the Thani environment, and I've had a lot of Picos plugged into this, and I'm up to COM port 27. Uh, so if you use a variety like me, it seems like every new Pico is going to get its own COM port. Uh, here, I just select that first. That'll load up uh, the environment from the Pico. What's currently in there is MicroPython version 1.20. It's for the Pico W uh, with the RP2040. So you always kind of want to verify that if you're bouncing around between Pico Ws and re re regular Raspberry Pi Picos. I've got two programs that are on my hard drive on the physical computer over here, and I, I will be copying those in. Uh, so I'll just highlight both of them and upload to, and now they're inside the Pico. Very easy peasy. Uh, I've got two programs here on the screen. One has my password information visible, so I created a copy called uh, Core Button Example Video Safe. <laughs> so I'm not showing you my, my password and access to my uh, servers and network here. Uh, Commentary at the top, uh, this is mostly right off of uh, the file that I downloaded from coreelectronics.com.au guides Raspberry Pi Pico with Create a Simple HTTP Server. Uh, and the point of this particular program that I like about it, um, and I'll be showing you this in a minute over on a Raspberry Pi computer off to my right here, um, it has graphic buttons, and I really kind of wanted to utilize that as an interface for a number of projects coming up. So I sought this out. I'm not real keen on uh, HTML coding, although I got a hunch if we play a lot with, with these Wi-Fi Picos, I'm going to have to learn, uh, or perhaps I should say maybe relearn, uh, a lot of the HTML codes. Uh, so... Uh, from there, I think before we go into any understanding of any of this code down here, I just want to take you over to uh, the Raspberry Pi and show you how this website's going to look so that you have a reference as we're discussing it. Now, anytime you initially uh, start up a new Pico W and put it on your network, it does take a few tries, it seems like, to get everybody uh, communicating and so forth. So over here on the, on the Raspberry Pi that I'm viewing this with, I usually open up uh, the command window and put in a ping command, and that just runs continuously, uh, and that helps me to figure out and monitor uh, real quickly if I'm actually connected or not. Because even over here looking at the Pico, it may think it's connected to something, but in reality, it may not be accessible on the network. Uh, but looking at the Chromium browser here, we can see that I've typed in the uh, IP address for this particular Pico W and hit enter, and it loaded up this web page. And as you can see, it's very clean, kind of attractive looking. Uh, I think it'll work great as a base or a framework for any of the upcoming videos that I have planned right now. Uh, but it gives us a header up here, a couple of buttons that we can communicate to uh, the Pico. When I click this, you'll notice this line down here changes, and it gives us feedback. So when we make a command here, that goes to the Pico. The Pico does something and can provide a response showing that updated action. So as simple as this example is, to me, this is an outstanding framework for a lot of what I want to do without having to try and reinvent the wheel for HTML code to create that particular look and feel, as well as giving me the ability to communicate with the Pico 
and had the Pico provide information back to me here on the, on the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi Pico will take a look at the source code for this example. Most of it I really am not concerned about. I'm going to treat it as a, a magic box, so to speak. It does what I need, and I don't need to know what it's doing as long as it works. Kind of like how we treat all the libraries that we import. Uh, we import uh, time. I don't need to know how time works as long as it does what I want. Same thing with network, socket, and even the machine library. Uh, and then, of course, many of the other more complex ones or uh, higher complexity ones uh, that we utilize as well. Over here in the code, um, obviously you'll see an LED. That's just to let me know uh, we're using that as a, a flag here on the device to show connected or not connected. Uh, at this point in the code, it may not even be activated anymore. I was using that for testing. Uh, here is where you would actually uh, uncomment it and put in your actual SSID for your network and your password for your network. And that's what would go in between these two single quotes here. Uh, we're establishing a few objects to deal with uh, the WLAN, uh, wireless LAN, etc., passing it in our credentials. This section of code here, uh, I'm going to go a little further. Here is actually what's showing the web page. This code, which is kind of one big long thing tied into just this HTML variable here, all this defines the web page. So it, it's rather interesting how this works. Um, and it took me a while to wrap my head around it, but once I started playing with it, uh, it, it turned out it's pretty cool. Uh, Definitely not what you see is what you get. You actually got to put the code in and treat it at the more fundamental level rather than, uh, as I recall back in my days of web development when I had a what you see is what you get uh, editor. Uh, yeah, you're going to do real coding here in, in uh, not just drawing the picture on the screen and it generates the code for you. Although I think there's utilities that can help with help us with that too. Uh, but this is the thing that uh, we'll be putting a lot more attention into with specific applications uh, in future projects. Uh, so that just gets defined there. Then their code is going to wait for a connector fail. And uh, it has, uh, I think, 10, 10 times through this loop to see if it's going to connect, uh, etc. And then if you get an error, uh, it'll break out of there or just finish, give you a, a, a warning or an update that you're connected. Uh, getting into the sockets, which are all a component of um, establishing, I'm going to call it a, a link to communicate, or maybe a pathway is a better way to put it. Uh, kind of a tough one for me to define with uh, the little that I know of, of networking. Um, but this line right here is the one that we'll see down here that says, uh, uh, let me go up a bit. Okay, connected IP equals, this is how um, we know which IP address to ping for me on the Pi over there and which IP address to put in uh, to our web browser to see this content. This right here you saw on the the URL line for the Chromium browser on the Pi. And then it says it's listening on this, port number 80 for in incoming information. Uh, then uh, this is saying who it connected from, uh, uh, the client being the Raspberry Pi in this case. Uh, here's our request stuff. And then from there, it uh, published the web page and then continuously publishing and updating as we're interacting with it. Uh, so that actually does a lot of work and gets all this data and the connection all prepared. Uh, from here we go into an endless loop where we're going to continuously try to uh, get data and accept it from a client and then it's going to say client connected from uh, and then there's the request uh, meaning it's requesting a web page be served. And uh, this right here, 
uh, has to do uh, with setting our, our states on and off uh, for uh, the LED boxes on uh, the buttons over there on the Raspberry Pi Pico, the, showing the web page that's being pre presented. Uh, then these few lines of code here, it's saying uh, the information here posts to the shell below, which shows up down here, which is what we're seeing uh, right here. This is some logic uh, relating to what we do with the information that came from the Raspberry Pi's web page. This would be how we handle the logic of that. So he's sending a command over here. I'm getting the command here in code, and this is where I would do something with it. Uh, so, our, for example, if we were turning on the LED, now I would turn on the LED just as I am right there. Uh, this information here will post the information to the web page because we've made a change or a request that causes a change and then we're going to update the website in return for that action. And that's what this information is here. Uh, and if we look on the uh, web page, you'll see this same wording uh, down below. This, this little code segment here creates that uh, response and sends it. Uh, here we're doing additional formatting of it and then putting it into the format or adding in the whole web page and then the variable data here. We're going to send it with this very interesting line, uh, send the response, and then we'll close out the, the communication. And then finally down here at the end of this loop, is a series of lines that just simply close out uh, for an exception of an OS error, etc. Um, and then it tells us that it closed with connection closed. Uh, so with, with that, I'm hoping you understand, I'm not trying to explain all this to you, but just show you that there's a pre-existing framework and probably many of them out there. And rather than struggle through it, uh, which for me isn't I don't want to spend time on that. I want to spend time on my application. So in my position and how I'll be communicating with you folks on these upcoming projects is this area of code right here, which defines and creates the web page. And then right down in here where we get data from that web page and do something with it. So with that, I'm going to wrap up uh, this particular video, and uh, in the coming weeks and months, we're going to be looking more and more at using Wi-Fi, and uh, hopefully everything is going to come together the way I want to with regard to a larger project I'm working on uh, that'll start uh, showing up here uh, probably this fall. Right now, my normal work schedule is exceedingly uh, busy, uh, so it might get pushed out a little further. Uh, but once we get into that, it's going to be a lot of fun, and this will be a very key element of it, where we're going to need to be able to communicate via Wi-Fi from the Pico into another computer. So that'll do it. Uh, if you've got time between now and, and uh, the next upcoming video, where I'm going to be... Uh, where I'm going to be um, putting Wi-Fi activated on our temp and humidity data logger and showing you how to access the data there. And then we're also going to use that to set the date and time on the temperature and humidity sensor so we can power it up and communicate into it the current date, current time, so that way your data logger is recording uh, information with a uh, date and time stamp with that data. Uh, so that, again, that, that'll wrap up this video. I'm going to keep going on and I'm all excited about this and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next videos coming up real soon. Thanks for watching.